we are viewing the breastplate after the skin has been folded over. Uh, and as we go down into the cavity, abdominal cavity, you can see that the organs are in their normal uh, anatomic orientation. Uh, the body had been previously embalmed, so we can't say much in the way of fluid. And you can see there is some disruption from the aspiration process of the embalming procedure. But other than that, uh, we'll say what more uh, once we examine the, the organs further. We are viewing the uh, chest cavity after the uh, breastplate has been removed. The organs are in their usual orientation. The heart silhouette seems like it's a bit expanded, so we will see what that is about. As you can see that the liver and the, the stomach, and we had previously talked about the intestines pretty good. We are viewing the posterior aspect of the uh, organ block. Uh, as we see the lungs here, the uh, right lung, left lung, the aorta, and this soft tissue as well as the uh, uh, esophagus in that area there. And as we go down, uh, we're on the right side here, so that would be the liver. The other side would be spleen and, and the kidney. Uh, also the uh, right kidney on that side. But the organs don't look bad, so we're still trying to figure out what happened as we dissect the organ block now. I wanted to show the cecum. It was kind of thickened. Uh, the wall was anyway, and there's some hemorrhage along the mucosa. So I don't know if there's ischemic or what. That person had already been embalmed. So we'll, I took some sections of that just to see what's going on with that muscle and uh, in that little hemorrhage around the sequel area. We'll see what else is going on with that. So I expanded the examination of the colon. This is the distal colon. And sure enough, that hemorrhage, hemorrhagic mucosa extends the full length of the, uh, the large bowel. So I'm concerned about uh, ulcerative colitis. Uh, we'll see, uh, say more about that once we uh, uh, see the microscopic of this, but I'm concerned about that. As usual, you know, we don't get any clinical history during these posts, which I think uh, should be uh, game number one, that the pathologist ought to be uh, given a clinical history. So we're reviewing the organs here. We have the spleen, the section of uh, pancreas, there's a section of the uh, left adrenal gland with the left kidney. There's the right kidney with the section of the left adrenal gland. And here is the uterus, uh, which has a lot of fibroids, but other than that, the right ovary and uh, fallopian tube was missing. Uh, the left ovary and fallopian tube was intact, and that's just a segment of fibroid that came off, so a little mimectomy there. But anyway, uh, uh, the uterus, uh, let me put a little uh, uh, rule in there. So you can see that the uterus is definitely enlarged and obviously uh, probably weighed, uh, probably would weigh about 200 grams or so, uh, a little more than that, maybe 250. But anyway, it has all these fibroids in there. Uh, you can see the size of them. So we're viewing the undersurface of the liver. It's pretty normal looking. It weighed 1,300 grams. And then once we flip it over, you can see that it's pretty normal looking liver. Maybe some fatty change in it, but we'll see once we cut it. Uh, into and see what else is going on. So we're viewing the heart, the right lung, the left lung here, and not look bad at all. There's some little hemorrhages along the epicardial fat tissue of the heart. Uh, so we'll see what that is about. But other than that, the heart, normal size and everything, the lungs were okay as well. So we'll put a weight on them and go from there. But I just wanted to put the rule in there for you to see. Uh, they're basically normal size organs, essentially. We are viewing the brain after the skull cap has been removed and it looks perfectly normal. So we'll see, say more once we get the brain out.